Hey, one more thing before you go. We are now obsessed with cooking and travel shows, believe it or not. For those of us that can't really go out and explore the world at the moment, we find ourselves jumping into a variety of international travel exploration, food, and competition shows that allow us to vicariously live the carefree life of food, travel, and culture without leaving our couch. It's been pretty cool, hasn't it? Yeah, it's it's cool. I'm a little jealous of them, but you know, like you said, we're living vicariously. So vicariously, it works. Yeah. Well, thanks to my sister. Yeah, she got us interested in some amazing opportunities for us to experience some of this and create a wish list. So join us today on our journey through our culinary and travel wish list in this Sunday over the teacup session. I'm your host, Michael Hurst. I'm here with my lovely wife and co-host, Diane. Hello, everyone. Welcome to One More Thing Before You Go over the teacup Sunday. Hey, Diane. Hello, Michael. We have uh, really got into a different form of binge watching, haven't we? Yes, and they're very, very bingeable. There's not enough hours in the day. Darn it. Well, you know, as I, as I said in the opening, it's, it is, unfortunately, we haven't had the opportunity to travel. I mean, our, our kids, at least two of them, have traveled outside the country more than we have. The other one, yes. she's traveled quite a bit herself within the United States, but you know we just really haven't had that opportunity to do that as much. I mean, we've traveled within the United States, but they've, you know. they've been to more places than we have, and different places than we have. And yeah, I'm glad that they've they've been able to do that. That's good. It's good. Well, and yeah, it's it is. I, I we have to we have to admit we have been to Mexico. We went to Playa del Carmen before. It turned into this huge resort mm -hmm. area. It was still uh, run by locals. In fact, the hotel we stayed at was recommended to me by somebody from uh, the police department. We went to Hawaii we, a few times, which is great. Yes, we've, we've yeah. done Hawaii. Maui is our favorite place yeah. to go. We yes. we love yeah. Maui, and, and Maui's like going home. It just, you know, yeah. we were welcome there, and we had a great time. The waters, the everything was beautiful in Maui. So we, yeah. we visited we Maui. Maui. Well, like three times, I believe we've gone to Maui, which has mm -hmm. been like fantastic. I went to London yeah. once. The yeah, London that me. I went, well, I had to go out there. I got invited to go to a film festival thing out there. Then that got somehow messed up. And uh, because they had a, now I'm used to snow, you know that, but coming from Colorado, we used to live at 8,500 feet up above sea level behind Pikes Peak. So, we were used to snows, including 30-inch snows. Well, London wasn't used to having uh, a snowstorm so much that it stopped all the train service. Yeah, it, it shut down the whole city. Shut down the whole city. So I got to wander the city where hardly anybody was out, but unfortunately everything was closed. Yeah. So the Buckingham Palace closed. Went to um, uh, where Princess Diana lived, um, Kensington, Closed. Mm -hmm. um, everywhere I went, it was closed. The only thing that wasn't closed was restaurants. Right. But you did no get to do some one fun thing. You got to go to those studios. Oh, yeah. I got to go. Yes. Then after it thawed out and they got the tracks cleared, the guy I was supposed to meet, uh, finally, you know, he was able to get into, into the city. And uh, I went to uh, Pinewood Studios and I got to go to the uh, James Bond offices. I got to sit in James Bond's chair at James Bond's desk yeah. in the office at Pinewood Studios. So, yes. you know, that was fun. Shake it, not stirred. So that was <laughs> like, you know, yeah. that was like, yes, uh, you can call me Bond now. Bond, Bond, mm -hmm. James Bond. 007 B. <laughs> Uh, but that was kind of fun. But other than that, yeah. you know, we really haven't really been a whole lot of places outside of that. We've been to California a bunch. We went to Florida. We've been in within the United States, but Las Vegas, how many times? Yeah, too many, so, too but, many times to Vegas. <clears throat> but this give us a new opportunity. My sister and brother-in-law have made it a point, especially after her health scares, everything on her bucket list. You know, when include international travel, which they've done quite a bit. A lot. Of, yeah. Um, you know, uh, she was married to an Italian. 
in her first marriage, she was married to a guy from Rome, and that's where I was introduced. But we're going to talk what we are going to talk about. Um, but with Tim and um, or with Roberto, you know, she'd been back and forth to Italy numerous times. She learned to cook mm -hmm. from Roberto's uh, grandmother, and uh, so she learned old recipes, like good Italian recipes. Yeah. Um, but you know. She said, I want to go back, I want to see this, I want to go to Greece, I want to go to London, I want to go to Scotland. Want... So that's what they've been doing, you know, and some yeah. of you people have known on some of the community, you've known, you know, my sister's, my sister's had cancer three times, and um, she finally said, I'm just going to do, let me preface it to the universe, she's beat it again, yes. but she says, you know, I am going to... Um, I'm just going to go and I'm going to travel and I'm going to do what I want to do. And she loves to cook. So we have that in common. So we live vicariously through them as well. We do. So with my newfound love of becoming an amateur chef and the fact that we both really enjoy good food, architecture, history, culture, and more, we thought it'd be nice to share with you so that you too can also live vicariously, travel with us and make your own wish list. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind yep. of cool. Um, I started to say a little bit ago, I was introduced to the value of food, family, friends, and Italian philosophy of enjoying them all around the table, around the dinner table. I've told you many of those stories, uh, especially when I cook for you. Um, yeah. Some of my most amazing memories as a, as a kid growing up, my sister married Roberto when I think I was 10 or 11 years old, so um, he brought a slew of friends over from from Italy, from Rome, from uh, Naples, from Sicily. Uh, they were from, you know, a variety okay. of Italy. And uh, we all lived in the same apartment complex. So we had like like a little Italy right there. A little Italy, yeah. Yeah, it yeah, was pretty that cool. That must have been fun. Well, and yeah, it, it was. And, um, you know, what it, what it brought to me was, in, it, and I'm going to say this out loud, so forgive me, Mom. <laughs> First and foremost, but you know, um, I have a little bit of Italian in me, at Toscano, but it really resonated. My first job was with two guys from Italy Pizzeria, and they were actually from Italy. So right. I, I learned there was actually three of them because Giovanni was, was you know part of that. I actually learned to cook pizza, at two guys from Italy and from Italians, so I know what good Italian and Na Napoleon pizza is from that perspective. But, you know, it, my mother, um, her mother, let's start there, her mother was from Southern Cooking. They were from Mississippi, they were from West Virginia, they were from Virginia, that, you know, this whole area, just, again, I cringe. There's nothing wrong with Southern food. There's, there's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with, southern, with southern cooking. There's a lot of but, people who love it, and there's a lot of people who are good at it. And then there's probably people out there, like we've experienced, who are not that great at it. And there you go. Thank you for stepping in with that one, because I don't want to hurt my mom's feelings. She, my mother's deceased. She's up in heaven. But, you know, she could she could thump me from up there, too, right? <laughs> yeah, she she might. Uh, I don't, know. don't uh, want to take that chance. Well, I mean, realistically, here's the deal. Up until I was about 11 years old, what I knew, which I was never that guy. Keep that in mind. Cause you, I mean, you know that. I hate getting messy. I yeah, hate yeah. sloppy food. I, I'm a very, yeah. I hate, I don't put elbows on my table. You know, uh, I, I'm very prim and proper in that regard, which is different than the rest of my family. You know, um, my mother cooked pork chops in in lard and, and then made gravy out of that and put it in potatoes and then threw butter on top of that. So yeah, I remember watching that. Yeah. I remember watching it and the, there so okay, so the pork chop was maybe that thick <laughs> and the grease was this thick. They Literally were it was they were swimming in it. Yeah, it was oh, and and it's smoking over it as she's cooking it. That's fun. <laughs> Those are fun. I just went and poured more wine for myself at that moment because I was like, okay, this is what we're doing. I'm just going to have another glass of wine. Well, you know, yeah, I'll be honest with you. She, there was some good food that she, I did like Galumki. She had, yeah. you know, she learned, she made some things that were, were good. 
But yeah. and she did the best she could because you know when my father left and when they when they got divorced, she was a single mother and she did the best she could. She did. So from that perspective, mm-hmm. if she did the best she could, especially growing up in the seventies, you know, we I just found out recently women weren't allowed to have their own checking account to, until nineteen seventy four. Yeah, they had to ask permission. Yeah, I I just saw that, which is like holy shit. You know, you assume you start thinking about this kind of stuff. She did the best she could. But mm-hmm. when Roberto introduced me to all these wonderful people from Italy and this culture and the history and the food, I stopped <laughs> eating. I stopped eating dinner at home and I was, I was with them all the time. Mm-hmm. So I learned how to, and I've tried to employ that upon my kids and, and, and even you in, in, in everything that, you know, bringing that to you, that experience to you for the longest time. It's like, slow down, enjoy your food. And, you know, yeah. and, you know, you used to eat a lot of fast food. Oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I grew up with, um, my parents would cook out of, you know, boxes and cans and there wasn't really much homemade stuff. You know, they, I guess stew was probably the most homemade thing I remember them making, um, which is really good. And it was usually something that my stepdad had, hunted and, and killed which kind yeah, of a butt- too. <laughs> I was like mm, but it was good I mean I can't say it wasn't tasty it was um but yeah I, I I don't really I still to this day don't really like to cook there's a few things I do cook I I I, I know I've gotten better at those things you know when I do cook oh, you yeah. do most of the cooking but no, but I absolutely. do help you know absolutely. and um those things that I do cook myself are pretty good. They are. You know. Um, 100%, but, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I wasn't raised really doing that. You know, I didn't, I, one of my first jobs was working at a grocery store as a cashier. And I literally didn't know the vegetables that people were buying. I, I, it, and we had a cheat sheet, thank God, but I, it, I was a slow cashier because I had to look everything up. If they had a lot of produce, I'm like, oh God, please, please go to another register because I don't know what half these things are. I just wasn't, I wasn't raised on that. Fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, that just wasn't really a thing in my house. So, But, but now, I have to say everybody, she has evolved into a culinary mm-hmm. specialist now. She really <laughs> well, enjoys good food. She can, yeah, she, I, well, yeah. he, you, you when you go a couple of days without vegetables, oh you have withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> yeah, don't don't take my veggies from me, please. Don't take my veggies. I still mm. don't. I'm still not a big fruit eater. Um, fruit in my smoothies. That's about the extent of it. That's about but, the the extent of it. But yeah, I I went a few days a week or so ago without veggies, and it was I don't remember why. I just oh, I think we just hadn't gone to the store or something. But oh my god, I don't want to do that again. I need my veggies every day. Well, and, and you've also gotten used to homemade pasta. Yes. And, you know, the Italian way of eating pasta, where it's not drowned in, in uh, pasta sauce. Yeah, I or can't, I can't stand sauce. red sauce. And I don't like red sauce on pizza. It's all, it's the light olive oil or chili sauce. Lemon. On the pepper, pizza. And then you know, on Italian the pasta seasoning. is lemon. Lemon, olive oil, garlic. seasoning, garlic. So you get to taste the food a little bit more. We make our own homemade pizzas. Yeah, we make homemade uh, uh, pasta. Um, I mean, every, we make us, everything we make here, n- nothing really comes out of a box here or a can other than, mm-hmm. um, uh, I'm trying to think what I really use, tuna. Yeah, sometimes, well, sometimes you beans. use canned beans. Yeah. Canned beans occasionally, yes. But other than that, we don't make really make stuff out of a can or out of a box. Um, so it's it is nice because we get to enjoy that together. So and because of that, mm-hmm. and the fact that I am, I, I I'm an amateur chef. I, I like cooking. Uh, I actually you love do. cooking, really. Yeah. And uh, I've learned from my sister, and I've learned from the other Italians that uh, that I got to know who taught me how mm-hmm. to cook, in the and to appreciate the food and the savor it and the taste of a food and you don't hide it behind a ton of stuff. Yeah. You know, here, uh, obviously I'm American, but it, here in America, we tend to hide the taste behind so much other crap. 
that that you really people don't understand. Well, that. people like a lot of sauce and and stuff. I mean, I think that probably one thing I I do do that you kind of just don't understand but i have to have like a dipping type sauce on in most of my things or if we have like veggies and rice i i put balsamic glaze on it or sometimes spicy ranch or you know i eat a lot of spicy ranch and you're kind of like what i do that on my pizza i have to have it on my pizza so yeah yeah that's that's just i don't know it's the american way a little bit a little bit i don't eat ketchup anymore though so, no, you don't. No, no you don't. I, don't like I have to give that to you. Please. No, you don't. And you've never did. Had you ever mixed ketchup and mayonnaise? Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah, yes. yeah. That was that was how I, I ate it. I remember that. All the I used time. to kind of look at that, going, "What are you doing?" <laughs> oh yeah, ketchup and mayo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to go, "What are you doing with that food?" Yeah. I I know. I, I if I have fries, the occasional time I have fries, I kind of still like to do that. But occasionally, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's funny when we look back on our early career when I was working for the police department. That when I worked evening shifts, and I went from evening to graveyard, that during that time period, when I went back to working day shifts and I was cooking dinner, the kids didn't want to eat because they're going, You're making food, we want to go out to Wendy's or we want Burger yeah. King or we want, and it's yeah, like, What I, the I, hell? I was, I was that mom, I was that mom, yeah. But so, I was working full time. I was tired, and I had yeah. two little kids. And you you were working. You weren't there, and I wasn't. I, I didn't know how to cook. When I was so, on graveyard shift and day shift, um, yeah, we did that. And then when I was on swing shift, especially, it was kind of we had to readjust everything. But you know, the kids both, for the for the most part, the kids eat very very healthy. Especially Caitlin, Caitlin and Cordy. Yeah, very Kate, Caitlin's yeah. always been pretty healthy, and Nikki's getting there. She's, Nikki's getting there. She's getting there. She's yeah. getting there. She's, and she she's likes better. to cook. And she likes to cook. She does like to cook. Mm-hmm. Well, the first introduction, Stanley Tucci's Searching for Italy was the first thing that Mary suggested to us because she thought, hey, yeah. you guys got it. She knows how much I love to cook. She knows how much I love, you know, Italy and France and, you know, my desire to go to Italy and France and Spain and Greece and, and all these places. So she said, you guys need to watch mm-hmm. Stanley Tucci's Searching for Italy. And, and it was like, we got hooked. Yeah, I love that show. Oh, yeah, we got it. It was so good. I was going to say there were some weird, there were some odd, oh, that one episode. I were eating, I don't remember what they were eating, something, it wasn't haggis, but it was something with the sheep. Something else with the sheep. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. That was a little difficult. That, that was that was a tough one. But um, yeah, yeah, I but don't yeah remember it's a great it was, show. In Piedmont, Such a great I think show. it was. I think it was in Piedmont or somewhere up in the mountains. Mm-hmm. One of the places he went to in the mountains. The sheep, we'll the sheep farmers. The sheep yeah. farmers. Yeah. yeah. And it was kind of, yeah. Um, and then she suggested Chow House to us. And Chow, mm-hmm. like not C-H-O-W, but Chow is in Italian. C-I-A-O, like Chow, hello, and goodbye, Chow Chow, goodbye. Mm-hmm. Um so that was the next one that she were kind of recommended to us. So we kind of got hooked on that. And we binged watched both seasons. There's two seasons. Again, we'll talk about that here in a minute. And that's, and that's uh, a competition. That's a competition. That's yeah, a competition, competition show. show. And yeah. the, which, which in the past, we've watched a few competition shows. But, you know, we kind of drowned out of them because of the fact it was... Um, well, back too, in the day, it was Iron Chef. Iron Chef. It just screamed and, we and loved hard it. and yelling. We loved it. But it was a lot of yelling and screaming, so we kind of got over it. And then we didn't watch anything much after that for a while. And we do like the shows that, um, I should remember this guy's name, blonde-haired guy with the spiky hair, drives a Camaro. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Yes. Yeah. Guy Guy Fiero. Guy Guy Fieri. Guy 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 Fieri. You know, we, we had watched a lot of his stuff because we liked watching what he was eating and everything. But you know something? Yeah. Most everything he went to was a lot of, it was a lot of, of greasy. Well, it was diners. It was diners. Diners and dash. Yeah. Drive-ins and dives. Right. Although, That's what although he did was. have our favorite place in Maui. We used to yes. have a place in Maui, the, the, the uh, Maui Brick House uh, pizza Maui oven. Brick Oven. My, yeah, Maui, Maui Brick, brick oven. oven. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm getting all tongue-tied because I want it back. 
They did. No, they went out of it, they went out of business during uh, COVID. COVID. Uh, they did everything gluten free, but you wouldn't know it. They had oh, fish man, and so chips, good. and they had pizza, and they had oh, just so many good things. But and he went there, and he fell in love with it. The and best fish and chips ever, anywhere in the world. I mean, just oh, so good. It was amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. Then I found the next baker, the next baking master, Paris, which is all about French pastries, and it's a competition show as well. Uh, and then uh, we, I think we again, talked about that. I think we talked about that one on a, another episode. Not I think we ago. briefly talked about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do believe we did. And then we found Eugene Levy's The Reluctant Traveler, mm-hmm. and you know that in itself. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about each of these in depth, but. Um, and then the uh, she recommended uh, the latest one that we've been we have been binge watching is somebody feed Phil, mm-hmm. and which is <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the the interesting part about any one of these is that uh, not only do you get to see the recipe, see the food, see the way they eat, see the way they they incorporate the European way of eating and the American way of eating are complete opposite for the most part, for the most part. There are a few fine dining establishments that follow a kind of a, a standard here, but for the most part, if you go to Italy, anywhere in Italy, everywhere in Greece, anywhere in, in Spain, um, especially France, Italy, Greece, Spain, you're going to have um, a relationship with the food. That's the easiest way well, to and as, as we saw, Portugal as well. In Portugal, in Portugal, yes, yeah. yes, include that. Um, is a relationship with the food. It is not just what can I eat, how much can I eat, and and how fast can know, I eat it. You don't have the contest for the twenty pound steak in in fifty minutes, and you know you get it free if you eat it all in fifty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Or the pie eating contest where they stuff, or the hot dog. Hot How dog many eating Hot contest. dogs can you shove down your throat? You know, it, they find it disgusting, actually. So I kind of agree with them in that regard. But yeah. I, we don't watch those. Yeah. We just don't watch those. Um, but Stanley Tucci, Searching for Italy, we just talked about it. It ran from 2021 to 2022. There was only two seasons. Was it two seasons? I think it was two. I feel like it was two seasons. Yeah, two seasons. Um, it was great. Might have been three. It, it wasn't. It maybe wasn't it was three. three. Yeah, because they're real short seasons. They're like eight episodes mm-hmm. each. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's four, well, no. It's two two seasons, fourteen episodes. Oh. I, I, in my notes, I have two seasons, fourteen episodes. Okay. Uh, Seems you like can a still lot find. More. Yeah, you can find it on Max, and uh, you can rent it on Prime Video or buy it on Prime Video. So you mm-hmm. you can still see it that way. Those both of those ways. Uh, the two seasons, 14 episodes, they went to Naples, they went to Amalfi Coast, they went to Rome, mm. Bologna, Milan, Tuscany, Sicily, Venice, Piedmont, Umbria, Calabria, Sardinia, London, and Puglia. And yes, I say London because London has a large portion of people from Italy that have moved to London and created a little Italy in London. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is what they did. My favorite episode, and, I think my favorite episode though is Amalfi Coast. And that's why oh, it was that, like... Yeah, that was wonderful. I want to go to Amalfi Coast. Coast. Yeah. And the lemons there and everything they made with yeah. the lemons. And, and, and that lemon and dessert the, that I have got to have one of these days, I'm going to have it. Yes. Yes. And we learned about it when... Uh, when um, If you're talking about the one that uh, uh, Phil Rosenthal got in Portugal? No. No. This is strictly an Amalfi Coast thing. Oh, it's the lemon. Yeah, the stuff they, yeah. they did. I don't remember pasta, what it's lemon called. Pasta. I, I don't remember what it's yeah. called, but that was my favorite episode, and I'm going to eat everything that they have in that episode one of these days. But Stanley Tucci, he, the, the premise is Stanley Tucci traveled across Italy to discover the secrets and delights of the country's regional cuisines. Viewers will go along with him as he enjoys the luxurious, creamy carbonara of Rome, the delicious simplicity of Sicily's pasta, alla norma, the saffron-infused silkiness of risotto in Milan, the crispy mm. tenderness of bischetta alla fiorentina, the perfect classic ragu alla bolognese, and the world's best pizza in Naples. And, you know, it's, 
it, the best part of this show and what it introduced us to is it wasn't just a competition where, you know, make this, make this, make this, make this, make this. How fast can you make it? I'm going to yell at you and I'm going to scream and holler at you in your ear till you, you make it a Michelin star little tiny ass portion of something. This was local restaurants, not chain restaurants. These were family restaurants, family places. He ate at homes. And, yeah. and, you know, some of these restaurants were in the family for years, centuries, yeah. for, you know, 100 years or more. And you got to see what they ate, how they ate it, the, the yeah. aspect of um, eating outside with nature. You know, every one of the, everybody they went, there was always a table outside. Yeah, and it's beautiful. Oh, the views yeah. that these people have are just... I would never. I would never leave. I would just. I would never leave. Well, we're looking at um, houses and apartments. I know. And a lot of these areas to say, hey, uh, you know something. When we get the opportunity, this is what we need to do. But you know, it it it, it started our wish list actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've always kind of had a wish list. We wanted to travel the world, but getting involved in these shows actually kind of inspired us to create the wish list because we got. Man, we got to go here. We got to eat there. We got to go this place. Yeah. We got to eat there. And, you know, Stanley Tucci went all across Italy. He went from he went, southern Italy to northern Italy to coastal he areas went to, to mountain areas. He went to every region. He went to every, every region. region. Yeah. So you, you get to understand what they eat, how they eat, how it's infused with a philosophy of good food, real food, family and friends enjoying that food together. Yeah, it was amazing. And, and one of these other shows that we're about to talk about here in a minute, um, it, it kind of, it, it emphasizes that, you know, we, we don't take the time. I mean, we try to do that. You and I try to do that. We try to do it with I'm our kids and our, and our family here. When our kids and family come here, what's, what's the first thing that I want to do? You want to cook for them. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sit at the table, fill the table. What's the first thing we do when we go to my sister's house or we go for an event at my sister's yeah. house? We're always eating. Yeah. We're always it's eating. Big, We're all at the dinner table. And she cooks phenomenal food for everybody. Yeah, it, it's and we bring it. We bring stuff. We bring focaccia. Mm -hmm. We bring something else. It mm -hmm. it is it is the epitome of food, family, love, laugh, enjoy life. You know, from that mm -hmm. perspective. So is something that we kind of go, oh, we got to experience it there as well through the eyes of Stanley Tucci. So, you know, I just recommend it. Put it on your wish list. Watch yeah, it. I, Put it on your wish list. Def definitely something to watch. You have to see it. And then she introduced mm -hmm. us to, now I, this might be a little bit out of order, but um, the next binge watch one we did was Somebody Feed Phil. We just started that. Yeah. This is a new one for us. Yeah, it's 2018 to present. It's into its seventh season. I had seen it on Netflix before, and I thought, I don't know what the hell that is. Yeah. You know, so I never really, yeah. I, pa I always passed it by. It just looked yeah. kind of strange. It had this guy, he, it, you don't quite agree with me, but there's a, one of the episodes, it was, was brought to my attention that he kind of looks like Mr. Bean. His smile, his face, his I nose, mean, his eyes, I, his... I guess I see it a little, but not like you do. And he's like, every kid. time you're like, oh gosh, she's so right. That, that woman was so right. That's exactly. And I'm like, okay. Like, I have mm -hmm. to show you the pictures. I'm going to have to show yeah. everybody the pictures side by side. Um, mm -hmm. But it is, he gets, he gets to travel around. And he's like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. You know, he, well, and it's, his, his personality is just, I mean, he's just a fun, joyful guy. And he's, he's the one that created Everybody Loves Raymond. He, no, he wrote for and oh, he produced. he wrote for yeah. um, Okay. I thought he created his, it. He didn't. Because it was based on his, okay. No, well, he, well, I think he, a lot of what was created in Everybody Loves Raymond was part of that. But it's currently streaming on Netflix. You can watch it right now. Uh, don't wait. Don't hesitate. You should start it. Don't look so at the picture good. and say, I don't want to watch that. Trust me, it's yeah. really, really he's, good. He's so, like I said, he's so joyful. It's just so fun to watch somebody really that's is. so happy all the time. It's, it's, it's not, infectious. 
It it is, and he's honest. I mean, he's just mm-hmm. you can tell when he eats something, and and he loves it. You can see it in his face. You, you can really see it when yeah. he hates it. <laughs> I don't know that I've seen him hate anything. I've seen where he doesn't. He might not like something as much as something else. You can tell. And he'll still say, oh, that's really good. But he's not nearly as excited as Although, he is with other things. Well, I saw a commercial promo where he spit something out. No, that was Reluctant Traveler. That's the one we're about to we're Oh, yeah, watching. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I think Phil didn't want to eat a couple of things. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll have to go back and look. It won't break my heart. I'll go back and go through the episodes again. It was nominated for two primetime Emmys and uh, won a Critics' Choice Award. Uh, it stars Philip. Phil Rosenthal, he goes around the world traveling to different places such as Bangkok, Tel Aviv, New Orleans, all while trying amazing food and meeting friendly people. He also travels to learn the history of the food in the places he tours, all by being fun and eccentric and, you know, the whole bit. He's a producer and a writer known for Everybody Loves Raymond, uh, The Simpsons Movie, and The Coach, um, or in Coach. I don't know if you guys remember... Coach. If you're old enough to remember, Coach, it was with. Um, yeah. Are you kidding me? And he was on Young Sheldon too later on. Um, Just recently. No, oh, he, oh, got it. Craig Nelson. Craig Nelson. Craig Nelson. I say he trained with with uh, Bruce Lee, man. Craig Craig T. Nelson. Craig T. Nelson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he's a comedy writer, and you know he 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 brings a little bit of humor to it. Some people understand his humor. Some people don't. <laughs> no. It's some his humor is lost on some people. Yeah, and and but you know it's he'll. Fine. It's fine. What's interesting is he'll go up to a table and just kind of say, "Hey, do I do you mind if I sit down?" And people welcome him. He he has no issue making new friends. No, it's not like at all. that's what he lives for. He lives for getting to know everybody around him, which mm-hmm. I am so. I'm, I just, I can't even, it's not in my nature at all. And I'm a little jealous that he can do that. Like, I wish I could be that person. I'm just not that person. Um, but it, it's, it's fun to watch somebody else do that and well, have it and work I, out he, for them. He and I do that. I mean, I, we, he and I have that little bit in common. You hate it when I do that. Yeah. You're more like that. Yeah. You're you definitely more like that. that. Um, well, I don't hate, I just... It's not. It's not in my nature. It's very uncomfortable for me. I'll start walking around and shaking hands and meeting people, and I'll come back and get you and say, "Hey, you got to come, you know, over here. I'm going to introduce yeah, you to these people." And yeah. You kind of go. Eh, I'm like, know. I'm like, yeah, go find somebody. Go, go, go. And then if they're if they're good, come back and get me. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. But his his season one starts off. And we're only into season two. To be honest, mm-hmm. we're only into. Season Are we on two. season two already? Yes. Season one starts off oh. in Bangkok, then he goes to Saigon, Tel Aviv, Lisbon. Uh, season two is uh, is uh, in uh, uh, Venice, Dublin, Buenos Aires, Copenhagen, and uh, some local areas like New York, uh, like New York City actually. Um, Mar- then he goes back to Marrakesh, Chicago, London, Singapore, Rio de Janeiro, San Francisco, and, and just so many more. And the stuff that we've yeah. seen so far. He, um, he, he's been able to kind of give us a different perspective. You know, we haven't seen him in Italy yet, I don't think. No, I think that's my, the next one. Yeah, he's not been in Italy yet. But he, he was in Lisbon. Yeah. And um, he, he uh, when he was in Lisbon, we saw a whole different view of, because uh, we want to go to Lisbon. That's one thing, mm-hmm. something we want to put on our wish list. Or if we you're have talking put about it on our the, wish list. Are you talking about the vegetarian vegan thing? Because that's Tel Aviv. No, no, no. Uh, I'm talking about okay. when he went to Lisbon. Um, it, it, it. What was really nice about it was the fact that it showed Lisbon. He traveled off the beaten path, and uh, he, you know, they have these um, uh, trolley Trolleys. cars that are similar to San Francisco, and you see the Golden Gate Bridge look. We don't see the Golden Gate Bridge. What you see is their bridge that looks like the Golden Gate Bridge, mm-hmm. which is like amazing. And then you see what you see. And I don't want to spoil anything. Should I spoil no. that? No. What you'll see don't is some spoil things. Anything. Yeah, there's some things you see in Lisbon that 
do you find in other areas in the country that started in Lisbon? Every Which other areas Portugal. of the world. Other areas of the world. Other areas what of I the say, world. country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, and you'll see you'll see things that um, remind you of San Francisco in Lisbon. And there's a reason for it, and he kind of explains it. So what you see is the beauty of Portugal. You see the beauty of Lisbon. You see the the um, the camaraderie, the family, the the friends. The you know, sit down at a table and meet people. It, yeah. Same thing. You 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 get to see this where you see you're not really. Um, I would never try that here. I know. Well, but you do try that here. Well, I do it, and, Just, and I've usually get people who are. You know, hi, how are right. you doing? We're from Yeah, I, I think, well, let's just say you used to do it more. You don't do it really anymore. Um, I think that I would do it more if we were to go to Europe. Because I would want to meet the people, people that are there. Yeah, I would want to really sit and talk to people and, or at least try to talk to people. I mean, you know, it might be a language issue, but... Um, I would do it there. I can't do it in, I can't do it here. It's, well, it's... The, the, the climate of America anymore is, you never know who you're going to talk to. You never know who yeah, you're going to... Yeah, it's kind of difficult from that perspective. And, and what's going to happen. You never know what, what kind of a conversation is going to lead to something, you know, explosive. Who knows? Well, plus it also, at least it's what sad. we've seen so far. I mean, look, every place that uh, Stanley Tucci went in Italy... I want to visit every place. Every place. Every every one of them. Yep. From yep. northern Italy to southern Italy, you know, mm-hmm. uh, all around the coast, even the ones up in the mountains, because the people were always welcoming and they were always friendly, and the and and the food was like, like looked amazing, and and the way that they prepared it, and they prepared it in such a way that it was meant to be shared with other people. Yeah, they make big portions because it's supposed to be like family style. Exactly. So that it was meant to be that way. Same thing with, with um, uh, Phil. You know, Phil Rosenthal. He he. Now I have to say this, it, and it's interesting because we have we have Jewish friends, and it, mm-hmm. he reminds me of, of one one in particular that's no longer with us. Yeah. But yeah. you know, his outgoing look is just very uh, easygoing and calm, and you know, even when he tried to do a joke and they didn't quite get it. He didn't get offended. He just kind of like, okay. you know, moved forward kind of a deal. But mm-hmm. all the food that he's eating, the thing that I loved about it and I love about this show is if he says he loves something, he's like a, a kid. You see mm-hmm. it in his face, the joy that comes out. is like, this is amazing. This is something else. You know, he's and so he's fun. eating food that, that on a Jewish diet you're really not supposed to eat. But he doesn't but, say anything about it. He doesn't, he doesn't mention that. It. He doesn't mention no. about it, but at the and same he sure time, he doesn't also, mention it to his parents when he gets on the phone with them. He does not mention no. something. <laughs> he just doesn't mention. <laughs> Although it. he met friends, um, he met some friends there that that he knew from the United States, and, and then when they filmed uh, in like in Israel, um, there were they did a uh, Everybody Loves Raymond episode in. Uh, I don't think Israel. it was the episode. I think they actually did like a a Raymond series in Israel. That's what I understood it. Mm, it's an episode. It was an episode of Every, Everybody Loves Raymond, but they did it in Israel. And it was supposed to be like the equivalent equivalent of. And, um, you know, the the interesting what, thing was, was that, you know, the one the one guy they were doing, they were at a tasting at this restaurant, and the guy kept bringing stuff out, and he'd go, I'm not going to eat that because it mixes dairy. I don't eat dairy with... With uh, meat with in the meat. same meal. In the same meal, the which same is meal. that you know that's a, a Jewish thing from that point. But mm-hmm. you know, for the most part, though, he doesn't let anything hold him back. And the kind of food that oh. he eats is just. Now there are some things that I don't think I will eat <laughs> when we visit some of the places. He's not that afraid. He is not afraid to try anything, though. He is not afraid. Yes. And I, I am a picky eater from weight. Well, I'm not as picky as I used to be, but. I, I'm uh, my the basis of my life is being a really picky eater. So some of this stuff on any of these shows, when they're trying things, I probably relate most to um, Eugene Levy on Reluctant Traveler. I mean, probably out of all of them, I relate to him the most because well, I'm it, like, uh. I I will say the diverse 
amount of food that's across these countries, across these cities, mm -hmm. is an extraordinary opportunity. In, in watching these shows so far, we found an extraordinary opportunity to really enjoy from a, all so many different levels and functions. And yeah. things that, for me, I was worried about traveling with all my allergies and traveling with my food issues in that regard because mm -hmm. I can't have, you know, eight of the, uh, eight or nine the of the top, top eight, the top allergens. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's difficult for me when we travel anywhere. But, you know, Miss, even Mary came back and she said, you're going to love it when you go here and here because, you know, the first thing they asked you at the table, when they went to, when they went to France, mm -hmm. the, in, in London both, the first thing that they asked when they come to the table is, do you have any allergies? Do you have any food issues? Is there anything special that you need? Wow. Kind of thing. It's the don't first do thing they, they don't get that here. You don't get that here. We get that here. No. Is, and I'll, mm -hmm. I will tell them my allergies. And then we still half the time have to send it back. Because they don't pay, or they're found really annoyed. They're annoyed that yeah. they have to do it this way, or they'll burn it. Which is why we don't really go out to eat anymore. Or eat more. Just yeah, they'll burn it, or it they'll, or this will come out this way, or, or you know, it just it, it just isn't the same. But she said, you know, you don't have to worry about. It. Then we found out from the the uh, learning about the 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 um, best master chef in Paris. You know, they've mm -hmm. got a slew master baker. Of, or Master Baker, Master not Master Baker, Chef. Paris. Okay. Got to be careful when we say that. I know. Don't say it too fast. Don't say it too fast. <laughs> They're going to um, say something else. <laughs> <laughs> the the fact that um, uh, they have gluten free and vegan mm -hmm. all across France and in Paris and in southern France, they've got gluten free bakeries and gluten free pastries that match or beat the, the regular, what everybody else eats. You can go to uh, just about everywhere you walk, you have gluten-free and vegan, which is available. Uh, Tel Aviv had 400 vegan restaurants across Tel Aviv that you yeah. can, you can um, you know, work with. Them up over. Um, England is no issues with people being vegan and gluten-free. You know, they had the same thing. No, no issue. Italy, gluten free. They have they have regular pasta. They have gluten free pasta. No, well, I keep you have, sending you. I keep sending you homes and apartments and stuff for sale in Italy. And you know, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We will get there. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. You know, we go back to, you know, even that the aspect that I learned. If we. Are, in, in what we've seen in, in the Stanley Tucci one so far, what, we, what we've seen in the reluctant, um, excuse me, what we've seen so far in um, Stanley Tucci and then in uh, um, Somebody Feed Phil is mm -hmm. the fact that they both, not only did they show us the food, but they showed us where the food came from, where it was born, the traditions that were carried forward why the food is cooked the way it's food, why it's made the way it's made, and how it's eaten, and how you should enjoy the food. You have a relationship with food, and that that relationship I, is supposed to be a good relationship with food. I think that um, for me, and I, yeah, I see where you're saying that. I, For me, what I got out of both of them, especially somebody feed Phil, is the people and the culture I think even yeah. more than the food, just a just a smidgen more. I think it's more about the people and the culture, which is so interesting and so so fun to to get to know. And um, and he's so good at it because he's so fun and happy and just you know he just exudes well, joy. Smiling. So like he said, everywhere he went, yeah. people were smiling and happy and you know pleasure. Yeah. It was it was great to meet them, and you know he 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 went into a restaurant, and then their restaurant said, "Well, you should go down over here," and then that person came over to this restaurant, and then they brought their food, and and then you know they, it went down to another third one, and then they they all shared the same food, and it was like they said like one big family. Now, granted, these people are seeing a camera crew, so I mean, there's a little bit of that. Like, we're when we go there, we're not going to experience, we're not going to have the exact same experience, and we know that. No, but um, I, I would guess that it would be pretty close to the same. 
Because we could do live podcasts from it. We can do that. We talked about we talked that. about that. Yeah. Bringing the right equipment and, and doing mm-hmm. that. So we, yeah, I'm sure that. But look, they we won't know a, what it is. Well, we could do take a trip for for vegan and gluten free. Yeah. Trip through Europe. I guess if okay. people see cameras, they like to. They That's like to be, be a, nice. I don't know. That that'll be our next, that'll be our GoFundMe account. <laughs> a documentary, short series, and a vegan gluten free trip across Europe. It won't yeah. take you everywhere. Well, yeah. you know, you go that to the reluctant. You, you take that contrast. What we just had, where Stanley Tucci was so outgoing and vibrant and, and neighborly, and then um, mm-hmm. Phil, who is so, you know, exuberant and same thing, wants to meet everybody and shake everybody's so hand fun. and yeah. how you doing and everything else. Then we come up to the reluctant traveler with Eugene Levy. Now, we Eugene still Levy, love him, though. We do. We love <laughs> Eugene Levy. Um, his show, The Reluctant Traveler, uh, has been 2023 mm-hmm. to present. It's still going on. It just got renewed for its third season. Um, mm-hmm. It's currently on Apple TV+, Plus, so you have to watch it there. They've got 16 episodes, uh, and, and again, it was renewed for the third season. Uh, it follows the adventures of Eugene Levy as he visits some of the world's most remarkable hotels, as well as explores the people, the places, and the cultures. So again, you have an opportunity to vicariously explore these places and get to know mm-hmm. where to go off the beaten path when you go there, not just the tourist spots. Right. Or tourist mm-hmm. traps, we'll say that as they call them. You get to go yeah. a little deeper into different areas of, of these countries and these cities and so forth. Um, we all know Eugene Levy is an award-winning actor. He's a writer. He's a producer. He's appeared in more than 60 motion pictures uh, to date. He's got eight of which have topped the 100 million mark. Mm-hmm. That's probably why he has the money to produce the show. He's a producer. Right. He's an executive producer on it. Uh, Top the one hundred hundred million dollar mark. The box office success of films such as American Pie, Bringing Down the House, Cheaper by the Dozen Two, Father of the Bride Part Two. Um, you know, pretty much established him as one of the Hollywood's most uh, popular comedic actors. Everybody knows him because of his eyebrows. And don't, don't forget, forget Shit's 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 Creek. Creek. <laughs> him, him, say, he produced it oh, with uh, his love son. Shit's Creek. Yeah, he produced it with his son Dan oh. Levy and uh, Dan Levy. And uh, I think he inspired him to to do The Reluctant Traveler because Eugene Levy, as he says in there, I'm not giving anything away, he talks about it in The Traitor. Yeah. Yeah. He He's not never a traveler. Travels. He just doesn't do it. He sits at he, home. He, he's content. He's like me. He's like me. He's a homebody and he's, I have to have my comfort. I have to have all of my comfort things around me. I don't like to not have something that I'm used to having in my daily life. And so I'm not a great travel. I mean, I, I want to travel, but I'm probably not going to be a great traveler. Well, I'm going to be more like Eugene Levy. Yeah, you hate it when whenever we have traveled, I'm going, okay, we got to go to this, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. You're going, I just want to sit <sighs> in a bare chair on the beach. Yeah. Will you leave me alone? <laughs> yeah. And if I fall asleep, I fall asleep. I don't, whatever. Yeah. And I'm going, <laughs> just, yeah, but we yeah. got to do this and this and this. So, yeah, yeah but. It, it's interesting. So Eugene steps out of the box. He steps mm-hmm. out of his comfort zone. Way, he, way far out of his comfort zone. Way out of his comfort zone. He takes us to <laughs> Finland, Costa Rica, to Venice, the Maldives, South Africa, Tokyo. Scott, Tokyo was a fun one. That was, yeah, that was really fun was because fun. Yeah. it showed us that Tokyo, which I never knew this, Tokyo has um, the same amount of people in all of Tokyo or the same amount of people in Tokyo as all of Canada. Is that what it was? Yeah. I don't remember. That, that's sure. that many people crowded into Tokyo. Into but Tokyo. what you see, and they show several shots from the air, is that they they mix the old with the new. So you have a nice blend of, of ancient traditions, mm-hmm. but modern technologies mm-hmm. all within that. That was so a got, really cool... I, I never really had even an interest in Tokyo, but I think after that episode, I'm a little more interested in it. I'm more interested. It's in good. It. Yeah. And it's then good. Uh, he takes us through Scotland, which we just watched, um, mm-hmm. which was kind of fun because you're Scottish, and mm-hmm. I've got a wee 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 little bit of Scottish. Yeah, my great 
my great grandmother was 100 percent Scottish and came exactly. over from Scotland. Yeah. Your last name is McRobbie. Your last name is Scottish. Um, mm-hmm. But Sweden, uh, Central Paz, France, uh, France. San Tropez. Let me try that again. <laughs> You're you are learning French and you speak French, like a little bit, hmm. and you can't say San Tropez. Okay, I need to get in the French accent then. Saint Tropez, France. There we have to go, go to Saint Tropez, France. Okay, you have okay. to go to Saint Tropez, France. Okay, let's go now. Let's go. And into Italy. Um, Greece and Spain. So we haven't been to Italy, Greece, and all of Spain with him yet, but we did yeah. get to enjoy like Tokyo, and we saw him in uh, Lisbon, and uh, yeah. he's going to South Africa. Um, let me see, South Africa. We didn't. We didn't. There was a couple episodes of the first season we didn't watch because, um, I don't know, just wasn't really interested. Utah. In those places. One of them was Utah. Yeah. We've been yeah, and it Utah. just seemed weird. It was like Utah was in the middle of like Venice. It was right Venice before and Venice. Lisbon. Yeah, it was or, Venice. Or after it was weird. Yeah, like Venice, Utah, Lisbon. You kind of go on. Yeah. Whoa. Now Venice was great so, because he also showed us some yeah. behind the scenes stuff with Venice. That that where to go off the beaten path there as well, and, and some great restaurants and things mm-hmm. that aren't everybody knows. That when you travel there, my sister has said the same thing. You know, my sister, um, we have relatives in, in in Italy, and my sister can tell you that there are restaurants that are geared towards travelers, and it it's geared more towards the travel experience combined with let me get you in the seat and get you out of the seat. Mm-hmm. But he takes you to the to some real restaurants that are just kind of really and so I'm looking forward to the one with um, uh, Phil, Phil I want to see where Phil takes us in, in Italy to see what it kind of brings yeah. to us as well yeah. but uh, he kind of takes us off the beaten path and it shows where it's at and where to eat and how to eat and, and so forth but it also brings the opportunity for um, the um, he brings the same thing to the table the thing, the, the the thing that's really across the board in in Europe and in Asia, is that food is an experience and it should be shared. Mm-hmm. You know, the travels experience and it should be shared, and that you know there are places that I know we saw some things on the news recently that there were uh, people in Spain and Madrid were literally coming up and spraying and harassing uh, tourists that were sitting outside eating outside a restaurant, which I find very disappointing. Uh, yeah. But it's not happening anywhere else other than Madrid. Yeah. Which I, I wouldn't say let that dissuade you from going to Madrid, but you know, it. Um, I found that the majority of these programs don't really they concentrate on on Italy, Spain, Greece, you know that region more than in Portugal, more than outside. Actually, you know, I'm trying to think if. Um we haven't seen Phil. We haven't seen Phil or Eugene Levy in Spain yet. I know that they not, did not it. Not yet. They they do go but we there. We haven't seen them. So we haven't yeah. seen them yet. Uh uh-uh. uh Um. Which I think that you know, from my opinion, I think it, it's another it, it's another opportunity for you to vicariously who live in these areas in different locations. You know, uh, Stanley Tucci situated in England. Um, excuse me, England. His wife's from England. I was thinking ahead. Um, yeah, but I think they live there, so I don't think you're completely wrong. They yeah, live yeah, they they live in in England. Um, yeah. But they but he grew up in Italy as a kid. Right. Stanley Tucci grew up. Both his parents are Italian, and he grew up there as a child and left when they was a teenager. But you know, he concentrated on Italy, whereas Phil is going all over the world, all which over. I think is great. Same thing well, with so is Eugene Levy. Trailer. Yeah. Yeah, say that yeah. It, he's going all over the world. So we get an experience all over the world. And places, Saigon. Look what they've done with Saigon. And like yeah, he said, everybody was there was smiling. Pretty cool. And, you know, cool. they, they really don't talk about the war. It was kind of in the past. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there are some people there that, that were there during the fall of Saigon, 1975, uh, Vietnam War and, and everything, that have gone back to Saigon and saw the transformation that they have there. And it's beautiful. It's green and it's lush and the food 
And you know the the people they're very welcoming and and it just mm-hmm. it's an opportunity, man. It's just an opportunity. It gets your blood going. Yeah, I gotta travel. I gotta travel. I gotta travel. Yeah. I gotta eat. And I gotta travel. I gotta eat. I gotta travel <laughs> around the world. You know, in eighty plates. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that brings us to the, some competition stuff, which I think is. Uh, it also gave us a nice experience as well. Chow House, Mary introduced us to Chow House, and, and it's run from 2023 to present. They have two seasons. They're waiting for a third. Uh, it's currently on Food Network and on Max. So you can catch it on foodnetwork.com as well as Max. It stars, I got to get this guy's name correct, and I speak a little Italian too, so I should not embarrass myself. Alex Gon. Gonciacelli. If you say so. <laughs> I can't well, tell you if it, you're right or not. It is Giannacelli. Giannacelli. Hey, it's Alex. <laughs> it's Alex. I was going to say, they just call him Alex, so I don't know. I think it's Alex Gonciacelli. And well, Gabriel. He's, a, he's an Italian, he's an Italian he's a, chef. He's a chef. Uh, and Gabriel Bertaccini, uh, both are world-renowned chefs. Both Gabriel and Alex are world-renowned chefs, uh, award-winning chefs, and they've been judges on other things as well. Um, but ten talented chefs, amateur chefs, and professional chefs, or semi-professional chefs, they live together. Uh, the first season's in a Tuscan village. The second season's at a village in Puglia. Italy, and they compete in Italian cooking challenges. Alliances are formed as they fight to the last chef standing, gaining an immense culinary education in Italy. Um, that in itself <coughs> was a lot of fun. I enjoyed watching those more yeah. so than I have watched like the Top Chef or the um, oh, yeah. any really of the new either. chef shows that have come out where the yeah. the Iron Chef, the 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 one where well the, that's old, yeah, Iron but, Chef is way old. What's the one where yeah. um, he everything you know the and he yells at everybody. Yeah, Hell's Kitchen. It's, it's Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, it it it's nothing. I don't like something like uh, Hell's Kitchen and and uh, those kind of things. Top Chef, those kind of things because what they're doing, in my opinion, is they're training more of the in. in I know I, I'm going to be a snob. People are going to go, what the hell? I am not into the Michelin star restaurants. I could really give a crap less about the Michelin star restaurants. I realize it's supposed to be the ultimate experience. But when yeah. you go there, I've been to one of them. I've been to two of them, actually. And what you get is these little tiny itty bitty tastings. And, you know, they're on your little, you got a huge plate, this itty bitty thing in the middle. And you're supposed to go, there's it's, your dinner. Look what I did for you. Look at this creation. Look at this art. This art that about, I created well, for yeah. you. It's all about it, the presentation. And then you're supposed to eat this little art. Yeah. And you walk out of there going, I'm freaking hungry. Let's find Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> and I don't eat Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> no. So I, I'm really not into the Michelin restaurants. I feel that. And we've watched a few shows, especially in... Um, uh, not in, not just in the shows, but in a couple of the sh- the programs that we have watched, they have chefs there that were Michelin chefs, and they walked away from that because they wanted to give people the more immersive experience and the relationship with food, and they walked away from being a Michelin restaurant or Michelin chef because of that. So uh, I'm not alone. But Chow House, and, if, and for those of you out there who love Michelin star restaurants and you love that experience there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that you, have at it. you can have it you can have it i'm into enjoying the relationship with the food the family and the friends that's what i'm into and, and, and know, i'm into it, not eating too many things that are too weird <laughs> <laughs> exactly. and, and a lot of those a lot of those mission star restaurants you know they'd be like Fog, fog, and all that. Like, suck the brains I mean, out I of am, that uh, big prawn. You have to uh, suck the head out of that prawn well, right there. That actually happened on both on the fill and on something else we watched. I can't remember what it was now. It was pretty gross. I, and it, I can't, I cannot, nor will I, probably wouldn't even sit at a table while people are doing that. 
Well, you know, you know, I tell you what, the, the one thing, speaking of food like that, the one thing that I have noticed and I really appreciate, and, and I'm gonna we're gonna talk about the last one here in a minute. I appreciate the fact that it is farm to table. Ninety percent of it's farm to table. Yeah. You know, it is not what's been trucked across the country and is three days or four days old already, or five weeks old or two weeks old. It's got a major expiration date on it. It is farm a, a market to table. And and that that was in Italy, it was across Greece, it was across France, it was across Asia, it was across it was in Tokyo, it was in Saigon, it was everywhere that they have been Greece, everywhere that they went, it Very was fresh not food. trucked across the country. It was yeah. fresh, it was you know farm to table, is what it was it, or market fresh market, and it didn't say. Let's go to the market. Go to the fresh market. It was always go to the fresh market. Mm -hmm. And you can see within the times that they that they did it, even in the next one we're going to talk about, the next Baking Master Paris, they went to a fresh market to get everything that they needed. Mm -hmm. And I think to me, you know, they, they had the fresh open market. Remember in the, the first um, chow house, they gave mm -hmm. them money and they it took did, them to well, the... Well, several of them. Several, several of them. them. Not just, they, yeah. Yeah, they they gave them money and they said, okay, we're going to go to the open market, the fresh open market. And you went there and that's what, exactly what it was. It was a fresh open market. You had different people with different booths, with different things that everything was fresh, including the seafood. It was crazy. It and, was and crazy. The but, and everything else. And it was, it was more than a farmer's market. I mean, we're not, we're talking like a farmer's market on steroids. Like Yes, it's, exactly. It was insane. And it was insane. I, I'm so much fun to go to. Like, oh. I would love to just, I would just love to just browse through everything, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I remember I was sitting there telling you, man, I, I, I did, yes, yes, we need one of these, yes. Mm -hmm. Because what do I, I guess we go to a grocery store together and where do I get stuck? Going through vegetables, trying to figure out what's fresh, what's not, what's going to go bad, mm -hmm. what's half bad, what's, you know, it, it what's really. The, what's it, the expiration date? Okay, well, it's like three days from now. Well, that's not going to do us any good. Pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, and then if you have it delivered to you, you're doing the same thing because those guys don't look. They just pick up what's there yeah. and what's available and you get home. And we've had stuff that, that we bought and or what was delivered. And then two days later, it's bad. It's just mm -hmm. crazy. Um, but anyway, on to the next one before we, we run w way over. Way over. The next, the next Baking Master Paris. I found this when I was looking for other shows um, after my sister and I were talking. And I was looking for something she had mentioned to me, and I found the next Baking Master Paris. And I asked her, she started to watch it, and it is nothing but uh, French pastry. And um, it'll make your mouth water. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'll good. make your mouth water. It yeah. is it's 2024 to present. So, it, I mean, it's just only one season so far. They're waiting the second. It's also currently on Food Network and Max. So you can go to foodnetwork.com and watch it there, or you can uh, watch it on Max. If you have that, uh, it stars uh, Ludo Lefavre and uh, I got his name right, Stephanie Boswell. Uh, they are both award, they're renowned chefs as well, pastry chefs. Um, uh, Ludo Lefavre and uh, has also been an actor, so he's been in several um, in, uh, several films that were internationally based. But he was, mm -hmm. he was there as a chef, by the way, or a pastry chef. Right. Uh, right. He does have a restaurant, that uh, a full restaurant, um, that uh, I think it's in Washington, D.C. I think he said it was I Washington, D.C. Because um, he invited people back to his restaurant in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, but he travels back and forth from France to, to there. Uh, and then Stephanie Boswell is an award-winning, she's won several um top chef contests and things like that but they both they're both judges and as well as as working chefs you know they are the uh, judges in this one competitors showcase their skills in baking and pastry focusing on technique artistry flavor innovation and inspiration and you know the the thing that i really saw from there was you had people that really really knew what they were doing or mm -hmm. people that really thought they knew what they were doing. Yeah. You know, then you had but, people with you know, major the that, egos. The people that thought they knew what they were doing, you know, they didn't last very long, I guess. But Yeah. yeah. But it also showed, you know, the the 
intricacies of making these um, uh, wonderful, absolutely mouthwatering desserts that you kind of you you kind of go, and they all could be made vegan and gluten free, by the way. So I'm going to try some. Of the them. problem, though, and I keep reminding you, is they're still going to all have sugar, which you're also not supposed to have. Yes, and there's going to be a problem. I, I will say this out loud because this is the truth, and they said it on this show. They, when they were telling people, because a lot of these, most of these people are from America, they were telling people when they add the sugar that we don't use sugar like you use sugar in America. In America, right? You need to. The sugar here is just enough to give it taste. Mm -hmm. Let the flavors overwhelm the mouth, not the sugar. They said it numerous times. They had to make sure that yeah. they reined in the use of sugar in any of those pastries. And that's the whole point of it. Here, you get a candy bar and it's got 20 grams of sugar in it. 20 grams. Siri, so convert 20 grams of sugar to teaspoons. 20 grams of sugar is 4.85 teaspoons. If you didn't hear that, that's 4.85 teaspoons of sugar in one candy bar. Mm -hmm. And that's just absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. So they pointed it out and they made sure everybody knew it that, you know, you didn't see a lot. In fact, when you watch them bake, you didn't see them dump loads of sugar in any of these. No, I don't. Well, they didn't, I mean, I don't think they showed every single person doing every single thing, but, but yeah, it probably wasn't as much. So. And, well, but and it, you also, they all look you, so good. And I think you also, we also saw that when somebody did, the judges would go, it's a little too sweet. You have too much sweet. It needs to be more this or more that. It needs to be there's, more balanced. There's not enough balance, right? Not right. More balanced. So you know that that in itself gave you know credence to me that you know it, they don't use the kind of sugar that they use here. So I don't you know in those recipes, the interesting part is is all these recipes, every one of them, can be found on the Food Network show, just like Valerie Bertinelli's, but With the Food know, Network website. Food Network website, yeah. Not their show, but on their website. Thank you for correcting me. So, yes, you can get everything that's on there. You can go and try these yourself. And you know, the problem is, you would you would have a, you would have to have three or four binders. <laughs> what does your okay. wish list look like now, after watching all these shows? I mean, I always wanted to go to Italy and France for sure, and I always wanted to go to Portugal. But there's been I've been introduced to new places now that. I never would have thought of before, or I've never had a desire to go to. And now I'm like, okay, I want to go there. No, I want to go there. So. And we have to find out there's a, there's a pastry that's made in uh, Portugal. Oh yeah. The, uh, how they say it. Pasture, pasture. Pa, pa, no. Plus, plaches, plaches. Whatever it is, you'll know it because Phil loves the hell out of it, and everywhere he yeah. went, he had well, to it's get like a national, three. it's like a national dish. They're they're <laughs> they're they're everywhere, and it's like a, it's like a, crust filled, little custard. Thing, I guess, I think that's what it is. Is it lemon? And with, and, and, no, and you put cinnamon and sugar on top of it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the one guy said, "Let me." I don't think the... it. I don't think it had lemon, but that would be good. But one of them, um, I think one of them had lemon. I'm not sure because uh, we also saw some cinnamon, lemon stuff. You dump you dump cinnamon and sugar all over it, and then eat it. Oh, God. Well, the one yeah, the one I'm guy. I'm so told him to do hungry that. right now. The other the I'm the uh, some of the other people didn't do that for him, but that one the one he went to, he said, "No, yeah. you got to try cinnamon and sugar, cinnamon and sugar on top of it." And, Reach over and well, the other ones, the other ones they went to when they they delivered them to the table with the big group of people he was with, and they had like platefuls of these things. There were canisters of cinnamon and sugar all oh, over. Oh, they the put table. them down there. Yeah, I missed yeah. that. I missed that. I was too busy looking at everybody stuffing it in their face and wanting to do the same. <laughs> so good. Well, my wish yeah. list has expanded immensely, and there are places I'm going to go to now that I didn't, and then it validated for me, you know, some of the places that I do want to go see now. And I think that, um, you know, again, it's expanded my opportunity. I never wanted, I wanted to go to Tokyo. I knew that they yeah. were very crowded. I knew that they were very um, 
uh, techno. They were very uh, well. You see the you see the visions. You've seen some of the scenes in some of the movies and TV shows and things like that, where when you go downtown Tokyo, it is lit up more than Times Square, and it's yeah. like day or Las Vegas. It, it 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 was like holy crap, you know. I'm not into that, but I learned that there's a cross section that can be achieved within that, so you can understand the old with the new, and that you can still have the old traditions with the new stuff and a, a nice balanced mixture of that kind of thing. Because we all we've always wanted to go to um, Kyoto. Kyoto and check that out, but now we figured out we need to go to Kyoto. We need to go to to um, Tokyo, and then from there we need to fly down to with the oh, zoo. Um, yeah. Um, oh, I was just thinking about it earlier. Singapore. Singapore. I never thought Singapore I wanted to go to zoo. Singapore. Never thought, but we saw what was that? Oh, that was um, help me. That you're the guy you love, the animal guy who is sick now. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate getting old. I really just a like, minute. <laughs> Jack Hanna. Hang on. Jack Hanna. Oh, I hate it. When you forget these names, it hurts my brain. I just, I can't. Yeah, anyway, Jack Hanna. Jack Hanna's episode when they went to the Singapore Zoo, and it's not a zoo. It's not a zoo. I, I don't know why it's they a have preserve. that name. And it, it yeah. you are right there with all the animals. I can't even, I, I want to go so bad. I want to go so bad. Yeah, it's to preserve. Yeah. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Plus, I think what the did Phil go there yet? Mm-mm. Eugene not Levy. Not that we've watched. No, not that we've well, watched. I think they're I think it's on the it's on the episodes that are coming up. So I'm yeah. interested to see you know Singapore from that perspective if they go as well. To, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it just my wish list has grown immensely and. I've now included countries that I never thought I wanted to go see. And I think that, uh, you know, if you guys get the opportunity, anyone out there in this community get the opportunity, you know, expand it, live vicariously. I mean, it, it, I realize it's not the same thing, but realistically, it can get you motivated to make a wish list or a vision board or, you know, plans. Start putting money from away com- in a savings account or. From the comfort of your couch. Well, it's been fun. It's been great. I think that um, hopefully we've inspired everybody to kind of take a little vicarious journey through culture, society, uh, food, fun, family, friends, uh, traveling, eating, um, desserts, eating, uh, pasta, eating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's um, I watch them all. They're all fantastic in, in their own way. And they're a lot of fun, and they're very, very bingeable. Very, very bingeable. So, one more thing before you all go, um, please know that uh, we love you. We thank you very much for being a part of our community. That one more thing before we go, community, thank you for being here. We are grateful. If you love this show, please make sure that you subscribe. You can uh, follow, and uh, you can write a review. And uh, kind of, you know, help us to move this uh, one more thing before you go a little forward. And uh, one more thing before you all go, have a great day, have a great week, and thanks for being here. Happy Sunday.